Good morning. Good morning. How come you guys get a table? It's Nobody nice else has you. a table. You okay? Yeah, I'm dancing. You all right? D dancing a We're little bit. Dance, the dancing, more feel, dancing. Feel yeah. the move. Keeping the dancing going on. So you have a few slides. So why don't you give us the overview, and then maybe we'll open it up to any questions that anybody has about this upcoming big event, all right? Sure. Yeah. So good, good morning, everybody. I, I think this is the, the end of a long week, a very, very busy week. So I will go directly to the tough questions. I had many discussions during the dinner, having a snack with people. So the question you all have in mind is, when do we open? When is the Louvre would be open? Better crack it up. We are opening this year, 2017. The, the site uh, David was describing is, is an incredibly uh, gigantic uh, working uh, site today, days and nights. Team is mobilized to finish and, and to test and to operate this museum. So, I also think that some of you came to Abu Dhabi for the first time for this summit, and, and you didn't think it would be the only time you would come to Abu Dhabi. You will have to come back. It's uh, a must. You will have to come back to see the museum open. So the Louvre Abu Dhabi is also, I think, echoing some of the themes that have been discussed this week. Um, the summit opened with discussion about universality, about connection, uh, um, what makes uh, people dispersed, diverse, and, and, and similar? What are the common ground? And this is definitely um, what the Louvre Abu Dhabi will be talking about. Abu Dhabi vision was to create a, a universal museum for these multicultural societies. I think that we have to keep in mind was what is uh, Ines Nayan said on Monday about this ecosystem which could be the museum of, of uh, Saadiyat, which could be the universities, which could be all the initiatives we're talking about. And, and all of this, the Louvre Abu Dhabi has to be, is embedded in this, uh, in this uh, strong momentum, UAE momentum toward the world. Um, two nations came together for this uh, incredible agreement between the UAE and France to build an Emirati Museum in Abu Dhabi with a universal narrative to the world. I think that the, the best one to, to frame it this, this week was, was uh, uh, Mohamed al-Mubarak, uh, when he was uh, giving the diplomatic uh, prizes, he said, uh, we believe that we have always been connected and, and we will shed uh, a light on our humanity. And I think this is uh, the motto of the Louvre Abu Dhabi. Well, so we will have the difficult task of, of uh, giving you a glimpse of what the, the Louvre Abu Dhabi is. And when we're talking about Louvre Abu Dhabi, a lot of uh, people are also saying that is this something new, something to the region. But I, I go back to what Zeki as well said in his panel, uh, that culture preservation was part of our late founder, Sheikh Zayed, from the, for, from the start. So back in the 60s and 70s, when we were still forming this nation, and building, he was thinking of building hospitals, infrastructure, schools, at that same time, culture and cultural preservation was also an important agenda. He, the first museum in Al Ain was built in 1969, even before the formation of this nation. So you, you just have to put it in, in a framework of how this was, an important, um, this was an important thing from the start of the nation. So in a way, Louvre Abu Dhabi as a museum is a continuation of his plan and his legacy. And it's one of many cultural initiatives that Abu Dhabi is, is having today. I think we have to pass through. Uh, it's a, the starting point was a state-to-state -state agreement. Um, ten years ago, in March 2007, this incredible agreement between uh, Abu Dhabi and, and France was signed, which was a very long-term commitment. The name of the Louvre was given to this museum for 30 years and, and six months, if I'm correct, uh, uh, to bear this museum, Louvre Abu Dhabi. So the, the meeting point of these two names. Uh, but the agreement was a very, very um, consistent and complex one with loans during 10 years for the permanent galleries, with 15 years of exhibition, international exhibition. But, and, and this is maybe, um, one of the most uh, important uh, elements, there was also um, a, a key 
uh, transfer of knowledge and expertise, working together, building the team, which is exactly what uh, brought us 10 years after to this uh, readiness to open, eagerness to open. You have to imagine, uh, there were a lot of discussion about cultural diplomacy this week. Uh, it is an ast stunning uh, accomplishment in terms of cultural diplomacy. But even as a Frenchman, I can say it, even within the French museums, bringing all the French museums together was an internal cultural diplomacy exercise. So we have the Louvre, but we also have um, to, to fulfill this universal narrative. We have, for all of those who have been to Paris, you know that the Louvre is finishing in 1848, and that the next room, to go to the next room, you have to cross the Seine and to go to the Musée d'Orsay, in a way. And then the room after would be the Centre Pompidou. And if you want to be really universal, if you want to embrace all culture of the world, you need to have the Musée du Quai Branly, you need to have the Musée Guimet for the Asian art, and, and we brought all of these museums together, united to have the access to the best collections for the Louvre Abu Dhabi. Um, in, in, uh, so we will... Am I losing my... Uh... Yes, uh, this, this is the, uh, the Louvre, but not only the Louvre. So we will present in the Louvre Abu Dhabi um, a universal journey, a chronological, in which, um, and that is going to be the novelty, the artworks from all these civilizations are going to be presented not in departments, not separated by um, a civilization, but all together in the same rooms and sometimes in the same showcases. But uh, talking to, to the artworks, we need also to talk to the incredible building and uh, some images to, if it works. Yes. This is a time lapse of building its development. If we go back to the building and um, design, really amazing about John Novell is his ability to design. So you look at this building that it looks like a Medina, this huge dome on the top that, uh, that brings down a rain of light. And we, we, we've been saying rain of light, and these are some historical images from this rain of light has also been coming from the region. So in a way, he was able to capture the light of, of the region from also the palm tree garden. And then he was able to create this dome that, that embodies that same, that same texture, that same light. This is the kind of feeling you get walking under the dome, which is an incredible, very relaxing feeling as if you're walking through an oasis. And the museum is a complex uh, Medina city in which um, you can learn and discover the artworks, you can also enjoy. You can see here we are between the permanent galleries on the left side and, and, uh, and the exhibition spaces, but we also have a children's museum, a project we're very proud of, uh, with uh, actual real artwork that will be uh, uh, the first room to, to for the family and the schools. And, and the museum has also to be a place in which you enjoy and have a good time. So we have a cafe, restaurant, and, and, uh, and a shop. So, you have here the feeling of walking through the, um, while the dome is floating around you, and walking uh, through the city. And what's incredible about this dome is that there's only four pillars holding it up, and it's hidden within the buildings. So when you walk under, you don't see where the pillars are. You feel you just got this big dome on top of you floating. This dome weighs almost the weight of an Eiffel Tower. And all of these stars, there's around 7,000 stars on top, and each of these stars are, are unique stars that have been uh, designed separately and uh, to create that uh, special effect. So, um, creating this museum was a good opportunity to rethink the narrative of the traditional museography. As I was saying, to put objects from different artworks in the same rooms, in the same showcase. 
we will try to give you a glimpse of, of the, the collection and what we're going to exhibit. We had a chance over these 10 years, thanks to a, a wonderful curatorial team, I think Jean-Francois Charnier, uh, who is leading it, is, is, is among us to, today. Uh, we had the chance to, to build an incredible collection, which is the, the legacy of Abu Dhabi, which is the, uh, the collection of the Louvre Abu Dhabi, and which includes today more than 600 artworks, and that will be shown uh, alongside with the 300 uh, artworks lent by the French Museum. We are following up. So we, uh, you, as you can see in this, uh, uh, this was a, 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 an exhibition that we, in which we tried these museographical principles to see how the artworks could be together. And it was one of the uh, very important room on, on, on religion and on, on coexistence of, of uh, sacred objects uh, in, uh, in full respect, which was absolutely uh, appreciated by the local and international audience. Um, we will show you some ideas which on this standing Bodhisattva from Gandhara are a way of expressing the similarities, the echo, formal echo that you can find in the dress. Of course, the Roman uh, on the west and, and, and the Bodhisattva on, on the east would be uh, uh, themselves echoes from the Greek, and this is an example of, of explaining how the pattern and the forms can travel. Another artwork here that you see on the left is an Islamic fountain from Andalusia, and the one on the right is a German aquamineal, um, both from the 12th, 13th century. Putting them next to each other allows us to think about that times when um, there was a conflict of crusades and uh, Islam and Christianity thought were, were very different, but at the end of the day, they've created objects that are they look quite similar, and the use of it, one had water as a fountain, and the other one was to wash your hands before ceremonies. So you start questioning the difference between civilizations and cultures when they produce, or they produce very similar objects. And after showing this um, uh, echo between artworks, we also will share with you some of, uh, as a teaser, some, uh, some of the key elements, some of the key artworks that will be exhibited. This one is, is one of my favorite. It's, uh, it's uh, the Bactrian Princess, an incredible, uh, cute and tender, and at the same time powerful object which was acquired and which is part of the Louvre Abu Dhabi collection. I, I, we know only about 40 in the world, and, and I think uh, this is one of the most beautiful ones. Uh, 5,000 years ago, uh, mankind was able to create this beauty, and it will be exhibited in the Louvre Abu Dhabi. This is another piece that we've announced recently of, um, of, of a funerary set of Princess Hanatawi. We still don't know which, which princess was, uh, was placed inside uh, this set, but it's part of what we're doing is researching and trying to find out more. This is gonna be um, a fantastic little uh, clue or, or riddle for the whole world to, to solve. Uh, and uh, maybe, I know this, this one is alone, but which brings me to the other key question I was asked during all this week when it was not, when do you open? The other question was, uh, will you exhibit uh, Mona Lisa, La Joconde? Um, so again, we have to be clear, uh, La Joconde, Mona Lisa is an old lady. She, she, she's not traveling anymore. She's resting in the Louvre and, and uh, God bless her. She, she, she's there and, and, and uh, for a very long time. Um, but thanks to the incredible commitment of, of the Louvre, and, and Jean-Luc Martinez has to be really saluted for that, we will have, and it will be the first time that uh, a fancy uh, pain painting is coming to the Middle East, we will have La Belle Ferronnière, which is one of the key, key uh, masterpieces from the Louvre, coming uh, for one year at the opening of the Louvre Abu Dhabi. This is another masterpiece acquired by the Louvre Abu Dhabi, which is a miniature, but not so miniature because it's quite a large polier. Uh, it's, an, it's an Indian polier, and, and what's so beautiful about this, and we wanted to show this to you in, in reflection of the summit and, and how, how it depicts court life, but also the idea of performance, the idea of, of dance that is happening inside uh, these courts. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece that will be on display in the museum. 
This is another piece as well by Osman Hamdi Bey, who uh, a young Amir studying. Um, he was uh, from Istanbul, but what's really interesting is that he was taught by Orientalist painters. And then he came back to Istanbul trying to depict his own culture with an Orientalist style of painting. So it, it gives you in that reflection of how to represent the self, but with an other form that was taught by, by, uh, by the others. And ironically, we will finish uh, uh, this uh, masterpiece exhibition by, by the first one of the collection. This Mondrian is uh, uh, key, key uh, piece of the collection. It was the first artwork to be acquired during the Saint Laurent Berger sale. And uh, it is in itself a masterpiece. But what is very, I think, important for, for all the team uh, on the, of the Louvre Abu Dhabi is also the echo that we have between the structure of the painting and, and the structure of the building in the Louvre Abu Dhabi that you have seen in the in the, the previous slide. So this, this artwork is also uh, a key, a mise en abîme of the collection. But a museum has also to invite and to dialogue with living artists and to, to open, uh, open its walls, open its doors to, the, to artists. You, you, you can see here um, a commission piece that we uh, uh, commissioned to uh, Jenny Other, the American artist, and she, she played with the content of the Louvre Abu Dhabi. She worked with the curators, and she uh, uh, is preparing something that will be uh, engraved on the very skin of the buildings uh, three uh, key texts. Uh, the, uh, here you have uh, uh, Akkadian Sumerian tablet of the creation of the world from, from the Pergamon Museum, which is uh, uh, engraved on the walls. But we also have um, an extract of the Mukadina uh, by Imraldum and, and a text by Montaigne. They will be on the very wall of the museum as an invitation from the outside to the inside. Another of these commissions also that you see here in the middle of the roads or this inside the building is by uh, Giuseppe Pannoni. It's going to be a, a tree that in a way rises up to the dome and, and, and will converse with the dome. And on the either sides of the tree are two windows that you see that are going to have some uh, porcelain that has been... Uh, um, that has been done in collaboration with uh, Sèvres in, uh, in Paris. And, and this image that you see on the right side is actually one of the porcelains. It's going to be these huge um, round porcelains that start with the fingerprint of the late Sheikh Zayed, and it's a continuation. And the idea of that, how a single print can continue okay. and, and create this huge uh, impact. Then when we're also, when we talk about the museum, we also talk about its audiences and its people. And, and here we've got some of the images of, uh, of students uh, that, have, that we have been conversing with, have been uh, collaborating with prior to the opening of the museum, whether through our exhibition, through our public program that has been ongoing the past years. Mm -hmm. So this was a key part of uh, the establishment of the museum is its audiences, linking with schools, um, having an impact coming through, through the schools. And, and it's fantastic looking at these images and even remembering uh, stories with little kids saying that this is a fantastic way of learning through exhibitions. Um, I've seen little kids that come with their parents and trying to show them what they've learned and how they uh, have done things. So just, just with a small exhibition that we had here, this had a huge impact, and we're looking forward to the museum opening, which would even have a further impact. These are just some images that we wanted to share with you. And another question that always comes up is, uh, what do people here in the UAE think about this museum? Um, and I'll leave you with this uh, teaser that we have worked with the art newspaper on. We asked uh, several people in the community, some of them you have met through the summit, about what they think about the museum and what's their favorite artwork. So this is just a teaser of uh, the project we worked on with, with them. Do 
John Nobel once said that art should be created for life, not for the museum. This is a collection of art that was created for life and it lives proudly at the Louvre Abu Dhabi. I never imagined that uh, 10 years ago someone said, I'm going to the Louvre. And then someone will ask, which Louvre? This is, is, is a quiet, joyful feeling. And it's a proud moment as well. The Louvre Abu Dhabi is coming with a great message. The Louvre Abu Dhabi, with its treasures, is connecting us to our history and to the history of the world. Every piece has, has a different story. The pieces that we're going to have here at the Louvre Abu Dhabi, it will ignite the juices of the mind. It will bring out these questions. Why this? Why not that? It will bring out the questions, how important is this versus some others? And I think this is what we want. What the Louvre Abu Dhabi is going to do is it's going to elevate the art scene in the Gulf. I think we're going to be, for the first time, employing international standards. This is the thing that I'm most excited about. أنا أشوف إن دور متحف لوفا أبو ظبي دور مهم ليرسل رسالة التسامح والسلام لأهل الإمارات وللعالم العربي وللزوار اللي حجي من جميع أقطار العالم إن يزورون. Do you want to repeat anything you said in the movie? No. <laughs> um, does anybody have any questions? We have a couple of minutes. You have something remarkable springing up not too far from here. Nice. Good job. I was just wondering what the current acquisitions budget is. I assume you're still adding to the collection? Um, the museum, which doesn't acquire, dies. So in the very momentum of the opening, there has been a lot of effort to, to, to be ready to have these two collections working together, embedded. So uh, none of the acquisitions are, are, are going on and, on, and should uh, normally after the opening still go on. The, the partnership with France uh, involves a step-by-step -step diminution of, uh, of the artworks loan, on loan. So the collection of Abu Dhabi has to, of the Louvre Abu Dhabi has to, uh, has to exist and to have a, a critical size uh, by the end of these 10 years. I also wondered, um, you know, obviously that, you know, humidity is the enemy of artworks and this area does have quite a bit of humidity. I know, you know, homes in Abu Dhabi have mold problems. Um, and in fact, the Louvre Abu Dhabi yeah. has invited water That's around it. And I, I just wondered if that's presented yeah. special yeah. challenges. Maybe when I was presenting the building, it wasn't too clear. Yes, it's under an open dome and these small houses that are coming out like a Medina, but these are enclave exhibition spaces that are on standards to present uh, artworks. Yeah. And uh, this, this has been from the beginning, from the start. And from from all, uh, Sultan al Kazimi was saying uh, international standard. This has been embedded in the program from the start. So each of these rooms is in itself uh, a little jewel of technology and, and uh, of redundancy and security. So. No, no, it was embedded from the start. Uh, it was really embedded from the start, from the program, uh, to have the museum that could host uh, forever the collection of Abu Dhabi on, on, on the French land. Okay, we have about five minutes. Quick question, quick answer over here. Yeah, very quick. I'm just wondering, are uh, you seeing this as another positive step towards cross-cultural dialogue between folks from the Middle East who are in France and Paris and some of the tensions that exist there? Um, and how are you disseminating or communicating that through the institution? What? I'm not sure I got it completely. I, she's saying, if I've got it wrong, this has the, represents the possibility for helping in the cross-cultural dialogue in France, between France and the Middle East, uh, as well as the cross-dialogue here. Uh, absolutely. A, a real 
I mean, as, as Lisa and, and myself are saying, a, a real partnership has to go both ways. And, and uh, I think that, uh, paradoxically enough, the, the, the French are learning a lot from this experience. And, and, uh, and uh, the example of the Children's Museum, for instance, uh, was taken, there is a little gallery in the Louvre, which was not, it's not a canton pasté, but it's a reflection which was uh, done for the Louvre Abu Dhabi, which triggered some uh, leverage within the Louvre. And, and uh, so these back and forth are definitely going on. Hi, Manuel. Hello, Saif. <laughs> I threatened Manuel with some questions this morning, but he said, don't ask them. Manuel, you talked about the art, you talked about the project. Can you talk about the knowledge transfer? Can you talk about how capability building is also part of this long and deep relationship with our French uh, partners? Absolutely. Um, this was also completely embedded in the program from, from day one. Um, so the, the team is uh, composed of uh, Emirati, French, international people, and all of them have uh, this uh, transfer of knowledge in their objective, and this is definitely something which is uh, done by the team. We use uh, the project itself as a learning tool, but the access to the French uh, museum system and to the international behind, not only the French, is also uh, allowed by the agreement, which is we bring experts, we bring uh, uh, museum specialists, we bring from all, all you know, museum people are, are, are very diverse, from the curator to the security up to the people expert in, in, in public and, and uh, education. So we bring these people to Abu Dhabi and they share uh, and they exchange and they, and they uh, uh, we also work with the university, with the program. There is one with Sorbonne Abu Dhabi, but we have connection with uh, Zayed University, with uh, New York uh, University Abu Dhabi. So it's, it's uh, a network effect. The last question yes. from there. Uh, thank you. Do, you. do you see or do you define any role for Louvre Abu Dhabi to help other museums and collections in the region who are facing difficulties because of conflict, disaster, economic crisis? Etc. looting. Do you see any role for your institution, your museum, to help them? Can I answer? Please. <laughs> I'd rather be fair. Uh, this is a, an initiative that's being undertaken by the Tourism Culture Authority. And it's part of uh, what we launched with France and the other nations uh, in, in Abu Dhabi in December and in Geneva and I think in Paris. And we discussed it uh, a lot in the last few days. Uh, one of the outcomes is the concept of safe havens. And uh, the Louvre of Paris has already said that it will be a safe haven for uh, uh, such uh, sort of threatened antiquities and, 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 and items. Uh, Abu Dhabi is very committed to this initiative. The Louvre does uh, have the facilities uh, that are worthy of pursuing such ambitious uh, initiatives, but I think uh, it's better to ask us this question once we've uh, opened. opened, and we'll give you a very concrete answer. <laughs> I, think, I think that was a good answer. Um, thank you very much. That was great. I have to say, I guess we got to go on a tour of the Louvre construction site six, eight months ago. And six, eight months ago, I came out thinking, this is one of the most remarkable things I've ever seen. It is an extraordinary, extraordinary building. And I didn't see any art in it. I just saw construction yeah. workers. Um, so it was, it, this, is, this is really a remarkable development on a global scale. This is not just big for the UAE. I think this is big for the art world. It's big for the world uh, as a whole. Um, you know, Safe here, who is answering these questions, has become, in the minds of many of you, your favorite Emirati, because he was the architect of the clothing um, <laughs> donation that was made to all of you so that you would go home better clad. So we think. Um, and, uh, and he's done something else today. Which, why don't you tell him what you've got at the very end of our program here? All right, so after the closing lunch, uh, we would be honored if you joined us in the main hall. We would be serving you a nice selection of uh, Emirati local desserts. 
uh, which uh, can give you a flavor of home. We hope that you can call Abu Dhabi home and you can leave with a smile, with nice, pleasant thoughts about the summit that we organized with David, with Carla, with Noura, and Mohammed, and the whole team. This is a kind of a dirty trick by Saif, because he's kind of a fitness nut. And I just encourage all of you, if he, you see him there, and he's not eating the desserts, make it. You make it, okay. You make an exception. Um, so look, um, th where, where we go from here is down the hall towards the lunchroom, but instead of turning right in the lunchroom just before, turn left in the theater where you see the big silks, and you'll see the way of the rain, which is this full production with music world-class musicians and dancers. We'll set aside the voiceover. You also will have a singing surprise in the middle of it from a singer you've got to know here. And, um, and it's terrific. And then we'll go and have lunch and we'll wrap this up. But we're gonna begin almost right away. So just head on down to the theater. Please join me in thanking the folks from the Louvre Abu Dhabi for a great job. Thank you very much.